Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. And if you find this video helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. First thing I want to talk about is um, that we can write the derivative formula in more than one way. Remember, the derivative formula is the limit of the difference quotient, but the difference quotient is just a formula for slope. This is the version we looked at yesterday. The only difference is I had, I believe, written uh, x sub zero instead of a. It doesn't matter. Okay, these are the same thing. We're just using a different variable for the, the point a. An alternative to that is to leave it closer to the normal y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 format except in function notation, which would be f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to think of the slope in this format. However, instead of using x2 and x1, I'm going to use z and a. So it would be f of z minus f of a over z minus a. And when I do that, I want z to be getting closer to a. So what this limit here means is z is getting closer to a. This is the same thing as saying h is approaching zero. Because remember, h is exactly the difference between z and a. It's how far apart they are. So if h is getting closer to zero, then z minus a is getting closer to zero, which means that z is getting closer to a. Okay, so this is a different version of the uh, formula for the derivative that you may see. And in certain cases, it's more convenient to use that form than the other one. So uh, we're just going to practice using that form on this problem. It says use the alternative form of the derivative formula to find f prime of negative one for f of x equals negative x squared. The alternative form, so we're going to find, use f prime of z equals the limit as z gets closer to a of f of z minus f of a over z minus a. Now in this version, z is a variable, whereas a is a constant, a fixed value. The a that we're looking, oops, I just wrote that wrong actually, my bad. At the beginning, please erase, it should have been f prime of a, not f prime of z. So the derivative at a is equal to the limit as z approaches the constant value a of f of z minus f of a over z minus a. Let a be, in this case, negative one. f prime of negative one is the limit as z approaches negative one of f of z minus f of negative one divided by z minus negative one. Plugging into the function, we have the limit as z approaches negative one. f of z is just gonna be plugging into this function. We're gonna have a z instead of an x. So negative z squared minus, and then we're gonna have negative negative one squared, lots of negatives, watch out there, divided by z plus one. Okay, so that means the limit as z approaches negative one of negative z squared plus one over z plus one. As usual, we would like to plug in the negative one, but we notice that if you plug in down here, we're gonna get a zero, and the same thing's gonna happen up here. We're gonna get a zero as well. All right, so how can we deal with that? We have the indeterminate form zero over zero, indeterminate form. What can I do about that? What do you mean by expand? Uh, you could factor out a negative one, that's fine. So we would have the limit as z approaches negative one of negative one times z squared minus one. And why did you wanna do that? So you can factor the top more easily. So that's going to give you the limit as z approaches negative one of negative one times z plus one times z minus one over z plus one. And then z plus one divided by z plus one is just one. So we can uh, say the limit as z approaches negative one of, let's go ahead and distribute that back in, negative z plus one. And now we can plug in. So we have the opposite of negative one plus one. So that's gonna be two. 
Okay, I want you to look at your paper right now if you've been taking notes and just make sure that your work looks like this. Check to make sure, for example, you wrote the limit as Z approaches negative one each time up until the point where you plugged in. All right, so now here's a question for you. We're saying that the slope of this function at the X value negative one is a positive two. Does that seem reasonable to you for the function f of x equals negative x squared, since that is a function that we're, you know, pretty familiar with? Let's go ahead and draw a picture. So negative x squared, just a rough graph. It's going to look something like this. So the slope of the tangent line here. Okay. So if nothing else, I can tell that it would have a positive slope without even going into any detail, that seems like it's, uh, it would make sense for it to be some positive number. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video.